One million Canadians are struggling with an eating disorder at any given time, and they can be deadly. February 1st to the 7th is Eating Disorder Awareness Week, and joining me now to talk more about the importance of understanding this disease is Deborah berlin Romalis, the executive director of Sheena's Place, and Kyla Fox, founder of the Kyla Fox Center. Thank you both for being here. Um, Kyla, eating disorders have the highest mortality rate among uh, mental illnesses, and yet there's this common misconception that it's a choice that we enter into. Why, why this misconception? Well, I think, I think because eating disorders are so misunderstood, the truth is, is that nobody would choose to have an eating disorder. The impact that they have on somebody's life, the devastating effects to the body, to the mind, there's no way that anybody would want to choose to have this. Um, and so, yes, that's a major misconception. Uh, Debbie, the, the eating disorders don't discriminate by some accounts. One out of four people with a disorder are men. Uh, and yet so many people don't reach out for help. What's that barrier that's preventing people from reaching out for help? I think we talk about the three S's, secrecy, shame, and stigma. And so when we think about how stereotypically we still treat eating disorders as a predominantly female disease, uh, it's so important to note that we see 25% uh, of the people we see at Sheena's Place are men, and they need as much support as anybody else re uh, receiving help. Kyla, have things gotten better or worse in a world of social media? You know, it's hard to say. I think probably what's happened now is just that there's more out there. There's more accessibility. More people are talking about it. In that way, I think it's probably positive. Um, but it also maybe sort of speaks to the fact that before, a lot of people were in silence in a different way. Um, so it's probably as pervasive as it pervasive as, as it's always been. But there seems to me, at least on, on, from what I'm seeing on social media, push for people to embrace this notion of body positivity and loving the body that you have. Uh, and I'm wondering whether, I mean, there, there are all these different uh, influences on social media from, from people who have aspirated, you know, this aspirational view of beauty to those who want you to embrace exactly who you are. So do you think these forces are complicating things? I think at Sheena's Place, we talk a lot about how the most real interactions and engagements that happen are like this yeah. in real time. If you are comparing and contrasting yourself to all these other images um, and bigger than life realities that are portrayed, you start to question, am I good enough? Am I fit enough? Am I beautiful enough? And I think we're already inundated by mixed messages around how we're supposed to be and look. And I think it's exacerbated by social media. Uh, lastly, and I'll put this to the both of you, the, the sooner someone gets help, the more likely it is that they can fully recover. Um, so talk, uh, let's talk about some of the warning signs that, uh, that can help friends and family identify someone who might be having these thoughts, who might be on the cusp, who might be dealing with something. So we certainly do know that early intervention is critical. We look at signs um, when I'm talking to parents or caregivers or teachers, social withdrawal, isolation, preoccupation with food and or body image. It's really important though to note someone's personality changing. Um, and while we can give global messages to you and to uh, the rest of the audience about what to look for, every person needs to be treated uniquely as an individual. Yeah, and I think that when we think about eating disorders, people do want to focus exclusively on what might be happening with a person with food in their body. So just as Deb said, just looking wider than that, recognizing the way that a person is presenting in terms of their emotion, their mental health, their ability to integrate or isolate, um, those kinds of things as well. Thank you to the both of you for being here. It's an important conversation to have, and Thanks we appreciate so you Thanks sort of launching us. this with us this year. Thank you for having us.